Hello everyone. In the last video, I explained uh, how to generate a amplitude modulated signal by using the pitching modulator. Now, in this video, we will understand how to demodulate the signal, a amplitude modulated signal by using envelope detector. Now, what is demodulation is? See, the modulation process is where we convert a low frequency, uh, you know, message signal into the high frequency carrier signal by changing the amplitude of the carrier signal proportional to the amplitude of the message signal. Now, in the demodulation process, what we have to do is we have to convert back this modulated signal into the original message signal. That means uh, the same you know, high frequency carrier should be converted back into the low frequency message signal, bringing back the amplitude variation. So basically, we can perform this by using a demodulator. It is also called a detector. So we are understanding one type of method that is called envelope detector in this video. Now, basically, there are two different types of demodulation, and they are the first one is a square law demodulator. The other one is envelope detector. A square law demodulator is nothing but it is a non-linear demodulator. Envelope detector is a linear diode detector or linear diode demodulator. Depending on which portion of the characteristic of the diode we are operating, depending on that we can have a square law demodulation as well as envelope detection. The major difference between these two, the envelope detector and the square law detector is, uh, the envelope detector is actually used for demodulating the high level modulated signals. Okay, and whereas this square law demodulator is used to demodulate or detect a low level modulated signal where, for example, uh, the voltage below 1 ohm. In both the cases, actually, we are using the diodes and some resistor capacitor filters. Okay, in the envelope detector, it is based on switching action, the switching characteristic of the diode. Okay, now as you are aware, as you are already know now, uh, time domain equation for AM is nothing but this. This is the conventional AM equation, okay, where the amplitude of the message signal actually uh, you know, changes uh, accordingly. The amplitude of this carrier with the frequency of FC also changes. Now, what do you mean by envelope detection is? What is the meaning of the envelope is, first of all? So, if the envelope is in general is given by, it is nothing but it is the root of sum of square of the in phase component and the quadrature component. Now, if I go back to this equation here, I have only the in-phase component, the quadrature component is 0. The in-phase component is having the amplitude which is equal to this. Okay, So, the square of the in-phase component I have taken, that is AC square 1 plus Ka m of t whole square plus the quadrature comp component is half z, that is 0. So, the root of square of this is nothing but, I can say AC into 1 plus Ka m of t, the root cancels over there, it is AC into Ka AC m of t, that is what I am getting. So, when I detect the envelope of the AM wave, what I will get is some DC uh, parameter which will be anyway element can be removed. The second part is AC into KA which is a constant, right, peak amplitude of the carrier and M of T is the required signal. So, that means when I detect the envelope of the AM wave, I will get back the message signal that is M of T. Now, how exactly we are doing this, I will explain by using a circuit diagram. A simple circuit diagram. So, I said we are using a diode in the envelope detector, it is basically nothing but it is a rectifier, a simple rectifier or a linear diode demodulator. Okay. So, for this uh, linear diode demodulator, I have given an AM wave. So, this AM wave is given over here, okay, in series with some resistance RS. Fine. Now, capacitor and resistor, this is a load resistor, this is a capacitor, simple capacitor filter which is connected in parallel to the load resistor. So, this is this actually forms a simple envelope detector. So, when I give this signal, a modulated signal with a varying amplitude, what exactly happens is, uh, this diode will be turned on during the positive half cycle and during the negative half cycle, it is act like an open switch, either a closed switch or open switch. During the positive half cycle, it act like an open closed switch, during the negative half cycle, it act like a closed switch. So, we get only uh, positive cycles, that's it. So, just look at this, this the output of the diode is given by this, okay, I get only the positive half cycles. So, when there is only positive half cycles, then what happens is, when it is uh, short circuited, only positive half cycle will be transferred to the capacitor and capacitor will charge and discharge. So, something like this we will get. If the charging and discharging is selected properly, that is charging and discharging time, if it is selected per perfectly, I will get back or you can say the envelope of the message signal will be obtained back something like this. This is the original signal. Okay. Now, what is the time constant for 
uh, you know, while doing the charging process and what is the time cost in doing the discharging process that you will understand now okay now the time when what should be the value of this so that you get a perfect demodulated signal something like this without any distortion so that what that's what we have to understand now okay the charging the charging happens through this particular path right so this is the path so we have a path charging path something like this i will show you with a pen this is charging this is what the charging happens so this is the charging which happens through this capacitor now what are the components i have i have a rs and this drive will have a certain forward resistance when it is forward bias let us say that is rf okay this is the forward resistance the overall resistance is rs plus rf into c is the charging time you know that t time constant t is equal to r into c right in general okay here yeah, r is nothing but it is rf rs plus rf that is the charging time now what is the condition this charging time rf plus rs into c should be small or short compared to the 1 by fc that is the time constant of this modulated signal because this is the carrier frequency and this is the time constant of the signal right is it this is let us say some tc 1 by tc is uh, fc the carrier frequency correct so this time constant should be short enough compared to the 1 by fc that is the first condition so i can say that that is we can say that rf plus rs into c should be very much smaller compared to 1 by fc that is if the time constant is very short what happens is this charging the charging happens very fast okay if i show it by using a representation the charging happens because charging time is very very short or less the charging happens quickly something like this you can see the charging happens quickly something like this okay now what about discharging time constant so here the discharging happens through which path the discharging happens through this particular path right isn't it so the discharging time is given by here i can say it is equal to rl into c so this rl into c is the discharging time capacitor should discharge very slowly it should charge fast but it should discharge slowly so if when it charges say fastly and discharges slowly and it holds the charge and when it gets the peak of the other cycle again it will charge quickly and it will hold the charge for a long time duration something like this again it will charge fast something like this it should not if if the time constant is selected short or less smaller time constant what happens it will discharge quickly something like this to make a distortion i will show you this in the next slide okay now so the condition what we need to satisfy here is the rlc this rlc the discharging time should be very much greater than 1 by fc but it should be less than 1 by w where w is the uh, frequency of the message signal or it is the message bandwidth let us say okay now just look at this example if the depth of the modulation is more than 1 how the distortion will results okay now just look at this this is a modulated signal where we have a phase reversal right some distortion is there correct the depth of the modulation is more than 1 so this is what the output of the let us say this is the output of uh, the diode okay this is the output of the capacitor filter just look at this it is having just one second give me a second yes this is this thoughted kind of recovered message signal right so the condition is the modulation index or depth of the modulation should be less than 1 now going to the next part as i told earlier if i choose very short and very long what exactly happens the time constant should be long right and the time discharging time constant should be short if i choose ultra what happens suppose it if i choose say time constant charging time constant is very very short okay now what happens here if it is very very short or a small time duration let us say 1 nanosecond okay so if there is no time to charge and discharge right the capacitor what happens is capacitor will charge and discharge suddenly so you get a some kind of a distortion in the demodulated signal correct now in case if it is too long say 1 millisecond maybe 10 millisecond what happens just look at this it may discharge something like this that means it is actually missing the peaks of so many cycles this is the problem actually we face in the demodulation so we need to choose the time cost rc time constant in the envelope detector properly according to this particular condition what i have listed over earlier so this is the condition we need to satisfy these are the very very important condition to get back the signals without any much distortion in the demodulated signal okay so in this video we have understood how this envelope detector works
So thank you for watching this video.